So guys, the topic of this video is about equipment scaling, which will be very helpful to anyone who doesn't have as many copies of the best equipment to go around as they want. I've mentioned it before in a couple of recent videos, I believe in the one comparing the starters and also anything involving Kawakaze. Just a quick disclaimer, this isn't going to be an in-depth equipment guide, so there's nothing really about what equipment is the best on what ship or anything like that. So if that is what you're looking for, or you don't have that prerequisite knowledge, then you should probably look elsewhere. Let me start by defining what I mean by equipment scaling and also equipment requirement, which is related. There are three things to consider. First, let's take a ship like Massachusetts. She doesn't have a barrage, so if you don't give her any equipment, she does pretty much nothing. Now contrast it with New Jersey, for example. Even if she's not using any equipment, she's still going to fire off her barrage 10 seconds into the battle as well as each time she fires her base gun, which is usually enough to steal MVP from 99% of the other ships in the game. This means that the relative increase of giving Massachusetts a gun is going to be much higher than giving one to New Jersey, so Massachusetts has higher equipment scaling. Although it's relative to our own damage, so it does not equal to a higher absolute increase. Second, consider ships that don't particularly need equipment to fulfill their role. For example, Helena and Kazagumo don't need any particular equipment for their incredibly strong buffs. Unicorn and Perseus don't need any particular equipment to do their healing, and so on. Therefore, giving them super strong equipment won't affect them much and they have poor equipment skilling. But in this case, it's more appropriate to say that they have low equipment requirement. And the last thing to consider is the rarity of the best equipment for this slot and how close the replacement is. For Drake, if you don't have a rainbow gun, you're downgrading to Cheshire gun at best, while for the other ships, if we look at medium armor, we have a much more gradual decrease, being able to use a bunch of AP alternatives that sometimes perform as good or even better than the Drake gun. This means that Drake has a high equipment requirement, and also to some extent high equipment scaling, but it's not really, which I will explain later. You can see similar things happening across all hull classes. Take a moment to think about which one of these pairs of ships have higher equipment scaling and lower equipment requirement. Enterprise and Saratoga. Drake and Cheshire. Yatsen and Silla. And finally, Kawakaze and Suzuki. Speaking in an absolute sense where you're considering the best equipment in any given situation, equipment scaling is not necessary to consider at all as you're only comparing the single best loadout across all ships. But for most players, this is definitely something you should be considering. The best ship that people tell you about is almost certainly not the best ship when you factor in the equipment you have on hand. So let's take a look at a few realistic examples for each hull class. First, let's take a look at the destroyer class. Three of the literal best destroyers in the game use the blue gun as their main gun. In the case of Shimakaze, just using the 76mm to proc her barrage and giving her any gold torps already gets her to more than 70% of the way to her maximum potential. If you missed it, I did an experiment where I completely removed Shimakaze's torps to see how much damage she does from her all-out assaults and torpedo barrage alone and it turns out those two barrages make up for more than half her damage, despite having one of the strongest torpedo slots in the game. For Kazagumo, you're mostly using her for her air raid assistance buff, and the gun is only used to proc her skills and all out assaults. You don't even need to give her torps for her to apply her buff, so any gold torps will get you most of the way there. For Kawakaze, most of her damage comes from her unique augment alone, which I suppose does take up another kind of limited resource, but it's definitely worth it. With just a blue gun and any gold torps, they're already almost at their maximum potential, meaning that they have very low equipment requirement. Their best possible loadouts really just restrict them to using quad mag torps rather than any old gold torps, which are still available just through iron blood boxes, but also the gear lab. Let's compare them to Anshan and Yudachi, who have a large chunk of their damage coming from their main guns, 
Their best loadouts feature the Rainbow Destroyer Gun or Pompeo Gun. After that, you will be downgrading to the Tash Gun. Their three best gun choices are all Rainbow or Event Limited, so they have very high equipment requirements. Although the three destroyers I mentioned previously have low equipment requirement, it does not mean that they have poor equipment scaling. Sure, they can't use the rainbow equipment like some other destroyers, but they're equally as strong already when using the blue gun. Another very important thing to consider when it comes to vanguard equipment scaling is how much they can get out of oxytorps. Oxytorps grant a huge damage bonus to torpedo-oriented vanguard ships, so naturally torpedo destroyers will make the most out of them. There isn't anything close to an oxytorp for firepower across all hull classes, which means that as a vanguard, the better you can make use of oxytorp, the better your equipment scaling will be. Even if you don't consider offensive auxiliaries, Shimakaze, Kazagumo, and Kawakaze are already top tier. But if you now add in oxytorps, they are elevated to another level that firepower focused destroyers such as the Ironblood ones are unable to reach. If you don't have rainbow oxytorps, you can still use the gold one from the soccer boxes that work just fine. So to summarize the destroyer class, the destroyers that make use of the blue guns have a very low equipment requirement, making them ideal for beginner and progressing players. And torpedo focused destroyers scale very well with oxygen torpedoes making them very effective if you have endgame equipment as well. In particular, Shimakaze, Kazagumo, and Kawakaze happen to fall into both categories, making them great options for all players regardless of their equipment situation. When someone says something like Yudachi is about as strong as Shimakaze, they're making the assumption that you have the more rare equipment that is needed for Yudachi to perform at her best, but also at the same time making the assumption that you're not using oxygen torpedoes. It is important to lay out all these assumptions to see if the statement is actually applicable to your situation. Next, let's take a look at the light cruiser class. I should immediately point out Scylla, who can use the 76mm just like the destroyers I mentioned previously, so her equipment requirement is very low. But her equipment scaling is also poor because she does not have very good torps, and most of her damage is coming from barrages, which equipments don't boost directly. Ships like Scylla who have low equipment requirement but poor equipment scaling are ideal for progressing players and the convenience of being able to use them at any time without having to switch your plus 13 equipment around, but probably won't be as good as ships with better scaling for endgame players. Back to light cruisers in general, this class of ships contains a ton of utility via buffs. The likes of Helena, Aurora, Aurora, John, and even Oshiro to a certain extent are used for their skills alone, so giving them the best equipment is not necessary at all. At most, just give them a rudder and toolbox to make sure they can survive, and they will do their job. So these ships are very good for players lacking in equipment. Statistic ships such as Harbin, Mains, and Kuibushev have much higher equipment scaling and may not be the best option if you're lacking in premium equipment. In particular, using Aurora with minimal equipment alongside two other very strong ships will give you more of a damage boost than pretty much all of the stat stick ships. Check out this video for more information. Plymouth is a bit of a special case because she's going to be the best light cruiser regardless of whether you have the best equipment or not, combining the insane damage of her main guns, barrages, and a significant buff for your flagship. To sum up light cruisers as a whole, if you're lacking in equipment, the light cruisers that provide large buffs through their skills, as well as Scylla, are great options for you while the stat sticks should probably be avoided and won't contribute as much. After that, let's take a look at the heavy and large cruisers. All the large cruisers use the same guns, so they have a pretty low equipment requirement. You really just need one Kronstadt or A gear gun for AP, and one Azuma gun for HE, and they are all quite close to their full potential. As for heavy cruisers, you're bringing Anchorage to tank and protect your other Vanguard ships, Cheshire for AA, and Baltimore for her USS Aviation buff, so their equipment requirement is relatively low, similar to the utility-based light cruisers. The statistic heavy cruisers want rainbow guns, so they have high equipment requirement, while having poor equipment scaling because the best they can get damage-wise from auxiliaries is a FUMO, which is nowhere as good as Oxytorp for torpedo destroyers. In particular, as I mentioned previously, 
Drake is in a kind of a rough spot right now. Being a statistic that is locked to her own gun and thus unable to use the Neo Hindenburg gun, which is a noticeable upgrade against medium and could very well be better against heavy as well. So her equipment scaling is relatively poor, especially if you're considering upgrading the Hindenburg gun over the Drake gun to plus 13. And that is not to mention that her equipment requirement is also high. Next, let's talk about the big guns, aka battleships. In the case of, for example, Musashi, she deals more damage through her barrage than her main guns unless you're using the 416mm. Looking at her typical equipment, the Izumo gun and the twin 410 Kai, she has pretty low equipment requirement relative to other battleships because she doesn't ever need rainbow guns such as the 457 or the MK7. She also often uses autoloader to sync with other battleships, which lowers her equipment requirement even more. Not only is she unable to use guns that are better than the Izumo gun and 410 Kai, so much of her damage comes from her barrage and the crit boosting effects of shells only affect main guns, so she has relatively poor equipment scaling compared to other battleships. Another problem is that her equipment isn't necessarily the best for other ships, while for the most part other battleships' guns are interchangeable. Musashi, along with all the other rainbow battleships, are all insanely strong though, so this isn't really much of an issue in the grand scheme of things. You can see that most of the good battleships that are not rainbow either have some kind of potent buffs or a lot of their damage comes from sources other than their main guns, including barrages and secondary guns in the cases of Odin and Rupi. So battleships in general have a pretty low equipment requirement, especially compared to the other main fleet class. Which brings us to the final class, carriers. Unlike battleships that really need only one main gun, that can be used across most other battleships. Carriers need three planes, and a lot of carriers want specific planes as well. As a general recommendation then for players who are lacking in equipment, get some decent planes for Unicorn, then try to use battleships. You can easily get through all of campaign on main fleets of Unicorn, four battleships, and one other carrier. When comparing carriers with each other, we have the classic example of Enterprise, who has the highest possible equipment scaling, as all she does is damage and 100% of her damage comes from the equipment she has equipped. There are a few other such cases as well, such as the Cranes and the Foxes. On the other hand, ships that have a ton of damage coming from barrages such as Saratoga, Chikolov, and Taiho, as well as healer ships, have relatively low equipment scaling. As for equipment requirement, it is loadout dependent. Fighter slots have a high requirement because gear lab, research, and event planes are much better than the alternatives. Dive bombers see a significant change from rainbow options to others, but the SB2C is extremely accessible and serviceable for all of campaign. For torpedo bombers, we also have to separate them by aimed and unnamed. Aimed torpedo bomber slots have the lowest requirement as the Tenzin and Tenzin Kai are not much weaker than the best available options in damage. The only real difference here is the ability to be upgraded to plus 13, as well as the 20 aviation, which is negligible compared to going from a purple Corsair to a rocket fighter or SV2C to Tenrai. Parallel torpedo bombers on the other hand I find to be quite pathetic, and I don't use them unless it's Wyvern, which is both difficult to obtain but also a huge upgrade over other options. So. To give a concrete example, we can look at Arc Royal, who can use a full purple loadout and not be much worse than her optimal loadout, which means that she is easily one of the best bossing options for someone lacking in optimal equipment. And then contrast it with Yorktown 2, who wants limited equipment all around for her ideal loadout against light armor enemies, which she excels most against. Okay, so that was a lot of information to digest. My goal is to show you how I think about the game, so I will always avoid giving direct advice to people. Next time someone tells you something like, Drake is one of the highest DPS Vanguard ships in the game, you can look in your inventory, which may not have a Drake gun but is full of random AP heavy cruiser guns from events, and a few blue destroyer guns lying around, and form your own opinion. That's pretty much it for this video, I hope you got some use out of it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.